and um, I, I think probably the thing I ended up focusing on more than anything else is sound. Um, but that's not going to be today because I thought your sound was beautiful. This mm. varied. You gave us a lot of surprises through the piece. I mean, I I um I think when you're listening to someone, you sort of feel like you kind of have worked out. I don't know what type of musician and you have an instinct also for the type of person the, that's playing for you and um, and you just kept taking us in many many different directions I loved your freedom I loved your experimental qualities lots of things I have never heard before in that piece um, <laughs> and um, very individual and There's some moments where you really are at your absolute most comfortable. Um, this second subject, for example, is just stunning. Really, really beautiful. Very moving. How are you feeling, by the way? Good. Well, good. I almost passed out in the middle. Of the <laughs> 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 That's better now. <laughs> Um, why did you almost pass out? I don't know. It's, it's just it was such a it's such a difficult piece That's to, to perform. I agree with that. <laughs> and it took a lot of trying to use every brain cell that I had to. Yeah, it's amazing. Once uh, before that first tutti, I mean, I performed this piece of the orchestra so many times. Did those guys not come in? They're right there. No. Okay. Oh no, they just ran away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be nice about it. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, the end of that, like by the time the orchestra comes in for the first time, yeah. and still after, I don't know how many times I've played it, but it's a lot. It's just hard, yeah. And I just, I'm like, did, did that all just happen? <laughs> you can't believe how many notes you played, how many you know, obstacles you've overcome, how many um, different expressions you tried to embody in that time. So um, I thought you paced yourself incredibly well. I thought you coped with that very well. I think. Um, uh, I mean, you looked a bit like at the end of that first thing, but I didn't know you were going to pass out. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, it's it's. I, 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 you also have to balance that. Like, can you, yeah. you want to bring people into the the challenge of what you've just done? Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, because part of the experience of many kind of solo instrument concertos is people watching magic happen. They're looking at something they can't imagine. Yeah. How is this person doing that? How are they managing all of these things? And how are they um, you know, bringing all of that together at once? So I think giving people that feeling, allowing people to feel, I mean, I, I, that's partly what I, I don't like about so much of performing professional concerts today is like this little perfect parcel that's just like everybody is pretty 100% sure nothing is gonna happen that's negative. And we're all just like, okay, job done, tick, it's fine. Which really takes away from the, the risk and the excitement and the, um, the, the drama, and the drama that's kind of a shared experience. I'm reading one of um, Beethoven's biographies at the moment, and he, he, he just, the amount of shock, practically every single performance he did would certainly have included uh, a sizable amount of improvisation and pieces that nobody had heard before, and whether it was in the musical context or instrumentally, or just in terms of his demeanor and his expression, everything was a surprise for people. And we have to really recreate that. And remember, although, do you, all of you play string instruments? Yeah, okay. Um, um, so everyone in here knows Tchaikovsky Vinyl Concerto. Um, there are many more people in the world that don't know it at all, <laughs> that are not interested, that haven't heard it before, that might be coming to hear it for the first time. You have to just always keep them in mind. Always, always keep them in mind. Um, but I am preaching to the converted because you did that. Okay. So um, that's absolutely great. I would say there is maybe um, one basic rhythmic thing. Um, triplets, many of them sounded like a quaver in two sound quavers. And I think uh, we've kind of dulled our senses slightly to the importance of triplets versus duplets. I think that's something that's important to really try to honor as much as possible, especially during this whole 
growth, all of this climactic stuff, like mm -hmm. you have to, especially as they're playing bomb, 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 you have to kind of feel that. Um, I would say there was maybe a little bit of a disparity in quality of your of your playing. Um, the places that are particularly kind of powerful and fast. Stuff that was fast and not powerful, um, I thought kind of worked really well. But when it really required you to kind of grow your sound, bring everybody to the height of that moment, and it's impossibly yeah. difficult violinistically, um, I would say maybe those moments were, were a little bit weaker than some other ones. Okay. Um, my my personal preference of this opening is just a little bit more purity. It was maybe a little bit too indulgent. I don't know if you're self indulgent, but you're indulging in something. Just um, um, but again, that could maybe just be more of a taste thing, and I, we don't all have to have the same. Taste, so that's fine. Um, let me think of some other things I wanted to say. Oh, just uh, one physical thing. Because um, um, you have such a, a kind of natural, relaxed hand position, which is great, um, that works well a lot of the time. But um, sometimes you need to actually um, add a little more kind of going to say effort or tension into your left hand um, so that I mean ideally you always want articulation in the left hand to come from a kind of falling action rather than you like placing your fingers in uncomfortable positions and that's generally what you're doing but um, there are some moments that like this horrible I'm exaggerating all of the all of the um, semitones because if they just if they if they're too um, if your hands kind of too relaxed and you're not really getting into all of those corners and you're playing it fast mm -hmm. generally what happens is the all, all of the close tones they just don't come out as close enough um, and the, one other general physical thing I would say is when you're up this part of the bow which I I noticed the most in that place, um, it just a little, um, it's like something is just a tiny bit stuck. Mm -hmm. And when you really needed to just like absolutely release and have power at that part of the bow, just seemed like something was restricted a okay. little bit. Um, last thing I'm going to say, and then we'll play. Um, to make sense of a piece that spirals as much as this one. It's the, it's those joining moments mm. that you have to pay a lot of attention to. To me, if I could make one general m musical criticism, you went from like first gear to fifth gear and back to first gear. It was like a little bit too extreme. Mm. So a moment like, <laughs> where I would say you were kind of then it was a different thing and then a new thing which, you know, I, I, I felt that a few times like we just suddenly were taken to another place you have to work extra hard to um, it's a really long, com think of it like a long complicated story and you are trying to make sure that everybody is with you in every part of that story. Okay. That you're just, you're trying to tell it to them in a way that they can always follow and always stay with you and always make sense of. Um, the last physical thing, I'm gonna say the last one was the last one, but um, your um, face sometimes is a little bit um, tense yeah. when you're playing. You are aware of that? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's, I think possibly my, it doesn't have to go, you can sort of my step a little bit. Oh, don't we all? Yeah. Like, I mean, but no, that, that is a bit somebody of... needs to just redesign a violin, basically. <laughs> it's like a nightmare. I, I come across like one person.
percent of people that are like, yes, I'm so comfortable playing the violin. I'm just happy. I just feel great. I love my chin rest and shoulder. Nobody says that <laughs> ever. Oh, I mean, many people have tried to, to recreate that. Well, I'm going to try your violin, but I'm definitely going to be uncomfortable. I can tell you that now. And probably you will be uncomfortable. Yeah, I've tried this rest. Wow, oh, it's quite a good attraction. It's quite a tool. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's like a I know, it's sponge and a half. <laughs> Steal some of your little tricks. One thing, one thing I want to say is 
was um, try not to play perfectly just now, but try to have like 20% on, I'm gonna not fidget and feel comfortable. Okay. So that will mean you sacrifice some accuracy sometimes, but just try to feel trusting, try to feel free, like I'm giving you a license to like miss a shift or okay. It's like a comfort rather than the, I mean, like it's a physical comfort mm -hmm. rather than you need to look. Triplets. 
trying to share that with all of us. So even if it sounds like you're just feeling your way, try, try to lessen the pressure on yourself. Yeah. 
So I, there are an infinite number of ways to play that run, but that should be a moment where you go like this. Your chest should feel like it can breathe there. Mm -hmm. I, I will forgive you if you don't feel like you can breathe in the bars <laughs> before that, but that place you should really be able to breathe. Okay. Um, can we just go from there from Bon Bon? into arriving there that you actually detract from what came before. Mm -hmm. Everything is about the relationship to what comes before and after it. So like sometimes you'll you know see performances where somebody's like kind of tense and uncomfortable but trying their hardest while they're playing and then when they get to that last note they do some crazy demonstrative outlandish thing mm -hmm. that's like they just I don't know won something <laughs> and and it, what it does is actually they finish playing and that has grabbed so much attention, that moment, that you're sort of left drawn to that mm -hmm. rather than staying within. Everything has to relate. There has to be a kind of a, a dimension that, that people just, it's not in, intellectually and analytically, they have to just instinctually feel that this is this in relation to each other. So if you do something really demonstrative suddenly, it can it can just detract from the expressiveness and the virtuosity of what you did before that. Mm -hmm. So when you get to the end of that, I know you're relieved, but um you can just feel some sort of a little bit of calmness there. And also with th things like this, there's two things that can help with run that seem to run away from you. I mean, if that's, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like you're in control. If you feel like it's yeah, tumbling it away from you, like you're playing catch up. Yeah, if you feel like that, two things can help. One is to 
played through that such a painstaking, slow, um, painstakingly slow tempo that you are feeling between the intervals in a way that has an emotional tie to it. So you actually, can, just like you play this melody, you play every single twist and turn and connection and kind of the, the rise and fall of the phrase, you play it with such heart. You have to find that in a run like that. Yeah. And that will slow down your feeling because you'll actually want to enjoy those moments. So I would do that. The other thing is break up that bar. It consists of a lot of things. Okay. Yeah, as in this bar. As in this bar, yeah. yes. So, so feel, feel, you know, make, make a, um, a journey for yourself. But um, make sure the whole time you are safeguarding what your instinct tells you. Yeah, no, because I you know I, I could I could be t I could literally be teaching you right now how to play every single note just as I want to hear it, <laughs> and just as I do hear it, and just as I attempt to play it. I could do that. Like, um, it'd be far easier actually <laughs> in some way. But I am. Um, I think it's, it's um, and, and that can also be very useful, mm. um, but I think it's just, it's, it's about taking all of that information, but at the same time safeguarding what's your thing, because yeah. we don't want, you know, sure. clones and robots and whatever. Okay, so, let's play from...
was that was so it was so difficult. This okay, I I'm gonna have to. I'm usually fine with like like would endorse and plenty of times do myself little like cheats of things that are not comfortable. But I don't need to just turn my pants down. I just don't. Like, it's too obvious. Can you just do like one little twiddle? <laughs> Somehow, kind of what I was saying about the runs, like embracing the, the melody within it and the beauty within all of those twists and turns. You have to practice it, not for long, but extremely focused in kind of pulling out that feeling and, um, and try not to feel the pressure. But that's another place also where your left hand just could do a little bit more work um, without getting tense, but just really making sure that it's getting in all the corners and anything that's uncomfortable. Well done. Yeah, really, very well. 